Uh, we have our next speaker, Dr. Rohit Saxena, who is a professor of ophthalmology from RP Center and is also a very essential part of my, our team as a member ARC North. <coughs> and he is going to tell us something very, very relevant to all of us, tuberculosis treatment and ocular toxicity. On to you, Dr. Rohit. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chitra, for the opportunity. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Uh, as you mentioned, I'll be talking about uh, anti uh, ATT or antitubercular treatment and the uh, issues that unfortunately are coming up because of the treatment of tuberculosis. So we know that toxic optic neuropathy is uh, essentially due to a lot of drugs that we uh, prescribe. Uh, however, the most common and the most important ones are the ATT and of them, ethambutol is the most common, although we do see occasionally issues with the uh, INH and also uh, linozolid, which is now increasingly being found to have issues uh, related to toxic neuropathy. But bulk of our experience is uh, due to ethambutol. And as I will be discussing, there are some issues that uh, have recently come up, which may be important for all of us to be aware of. So essentially telling you toxic optic neuropathy is because of a damage to the papillomacular macular bundle and patients would present with central or central uh, centrosecal scrotomas and color-related issues. Now, the most important thing why uh, this is important is that the National TB Control Program has, uh, in 2016, and they got implemented by 17 or so, has changed the guidelines. Earlier, it was an uh, intermittent regimen uh, of tubercular treatment that was given. Now, it's a daily regimen. Unfortunately, thambitrol is also now part of the continuous phase uh, which when it was not earlier. So earlier, ethambutol was only given for two months and we were struggling with a modest amount of ethambutol toxicity. But now because ethambutol is a part of the continuation phase, so we are probably going to face a lot more toxicity. The other thing is that there are fixed dose combinations now. So it's not easy to stop one drug. So therefore, we have to actually weigh carefully when we advise or when we consider ethambutol toxicity and advise for one of the drugs to stop because at the moment we do that, the patient actually cannot get treatment from the neighborhood dots and, and may struggle and therefore may actually be a person who drops out of treatment. So therefore, it's, in, it's really important now upon us to be careful not only in picking up early, but being careful when we are diagnosing and labeling it to be due to ethambutol. So the other thing is that the safety mechanism now is that there are very categoric weight categories, which are pretty narrow, and patients do tend to remain in that weight category uh, and therefore not uh, reach higher levels of toxicity. But we know patients lose or gain weight in the initial period, especially because of hepatotoxicity, and therefore they may actually lose weight and may still be continuing with the initial weight doses and may actually get toxicity. So as I mentioned, while um, the weight bands ensure that they remain in a relatively safe levels of toxicity, but increased risk is there in malnutrition in patients who are uh, consuming alcohol, tobacco, associated comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, and nephropathy. So these are very, very important things to identify and pick up. And of course, concurrently, INH and linozolid may increase the risk of toxicity, although we're not sure whether they, uh, they, uh, they act through the same way, therefore, whether there is any additive risk or not. And of course, uh, last record showed that there are almost 25 lakh people on ethambutol, so it becomes important. Uh, there are other differentials you must be aware of. So all patients on ATT do not have toxic optic neuropathy. You could have other presentations and other, uh, uh, other um, the presentation similarly because of other causes. And the other thing is that tuberculosis does not only uh, affect vision by direct uh, toxicity, but there could be direct infection like tubercular meningitis, tuberculosis, uh, TBM causing hydrocephalus with secondary optic atrophies, tuberculomas, which can occur anywhere in the visual pathway and therefore have visual damage, and of course, toxic, as I mentioned. Just showing you a patient on ATT for past three months, uh, recently complained of diminution of vision. Uh, his vision was 636 and 612. This was his visual field. Based on the temporal loss in one eye, we ordered an imaging, and you can see that this patient had a tuberculoma sitting right on the chiasma and was responsible for the vision loss. So all TB loss is not because of ethambutol. Another patient uh, treated for three months, diminution of vision for one week, severe visual loss, 
again you see that this patient had multiple tuberculomas and it's important to pick these up because here the treatment is not to reduce or to stop one tubercular treatment but to actually up it although we still recommend stopping ethambutol because uh, it will become difficult to pick up these patients so again another patient who had uh, uh, non communicating hydrocephalus because of tubercular meningitis and subsequent obstruction so incidence is essentially dependent upon dose and duration of use and it can present any time from one month to any extensive use and i mentioned age increasing age hypertension smoking alcohol and renal disease are major risk factors we are not sure exactly how it works but it is believed through its metal chelating property particularly decreasing copper uh, and zinc and therefore affecting the oxidative pathway and because uh, particularly the retinal ganglion cell has high cellular mitochondrial content they are probably why they are the most affected compared to any other part of the body patients will present with moderate to severe bilateral painless vision loss it may initially be little blurred and color desaturation and eventually be significant there can be a little asymmetry but eventually they become symmetrical patients may not complain of any symptoms and come to us when severe visual loss occurs and therefore often we miss or delay the diagnosis uh fundus in initial stages has no effect uh, no changes but later on you can see optic atrophy or pallor central and centrocecal field effects and anybody uh, who is on att almost 50% of them you will see subclinical toxicity in the form of increased latency or over time thinning of the rnfl or gcipl so anybody even though he may not suffer visual loss is actually affected by ethambutol if he has it for a long time therefore it's very important to have a high index of suspicion do opportunistic screening screen every patient who is on um, att as there is no effective treatment you need to stop ethambutol and therefore early detection is important also remember visual functions may continue to deteriorate for at least 4 to 6 weeks even after stopping the drug so do not uh, be apprehensive and start stopping other att also you must wait for a little while before you recommend inh uh, or any other drug to be stopped you want to prevent it and therefore identify early patients on higher weight higher doses based on their weight band longer duration renal impairment diabetes alcohol tobacco combination therapy with linozolid pre existing visual dis dysfunction in fact if a patient is on has some previous visual dysfunction we will recommend and advise the physician not to use ethambutol because it becomes difficult to assess and of course young and preverbal children at high risk patients you must follow every 2 months or sos the moment there is a visual loss as i mentioned it may be because of zinc or copper chelation therefore we must stop uh, or replace ethambutol multivitamin supplementation which should include zinc and copper up their nutrition stop alcohol smoking and of course have a regular follow up as there is no effective treatment you can only stop uh, ethambutol and that is the most important thing it's also our responsibility to report and document ethambutol toxicity and inform the pvpi so that these alerts can be raised because otherwise the physicians are not really concerned and do not think ethambutol is very important we've been raising this through inos also and a lot of our neuro ophthalmologists together have worked for it and therefore it is very important as ophthalmologists for all of us to work towards raising awareness among physicians thank you very much for the opportunity and patient listening very nice talk dr rohit very clear and a lot of learning supposing a person has had an ethambutol toxicity in one case and and he has a, a disease happening again a recurrence of tuberculosis uh, would you exclude ethambutol or could you go ahead and keep him start him on ethambutol again So the moment he, uh, I mean, I like I said uh, in that anybody who's had any visual dysfunction, particularly of course ethambutol toxicity, we would definitely recommend that they should not be using ethambutol at any time uh, for treatment, irrespective of uh, whatever. I mean, whatever issues they may be, even multi-drug resistant and all, we would really recommend the physician not to uh, consider ethambutol in the uh, treatment. when would you suspect uh, inh toxicity you would stop ethambutol and then only you would stop inh no so then yeah uh, so we like i said if you have a patient of toxicity you would stop ethambutol uh, and wait for at least 4 to 6 months for the visual loss to stabilize patients do continue to lose vision uh, uh, because the damage has already occurred and the vision loss will continue to progress 
and only if the vision continues to progress beyond four to six weeks would I go and uh, talk about stopping uh, INH because that is really the sheet anchor treatment for uh, you know tuberculosis. So we have to be a little careful when we advise that. Dr. Pradeep Sharma wanted to uh, ask. I think it was a very informative talk until the time we are able to lobby enough to have a better understanding of the usage of this, such talks are required. Uh, just for the sake of most people, I mean, how do you document and uh, report and where do you report? So what would be the agency that uh, most, because many people in the practice may not be aware how to report uh, the uh, ethambutal toxicity has happened, a patient has come. So uh, almost all institutions have, now it's kind of mandatory for the Department of Pharmacology to have, uh, you know, reporting of uh, side effects or SE uh, or drug, uh, any adverse ADRs or uh, significant uh, problems. And individually, the PVPI, the um, uh, Pharmacovigilance uh, Program of India has an online website where there is a downloadable form or even on the website, you can go and add and talk and inform them about the toxicity. And actually, ethambutol toxicity is a notifiable disease. You are ideally supposed to inform if you, if you identify uh, 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 ethambutol toxicity the, on the website, you will have to add and uh, subsequently inform the PVPI, which is kind of uh, the place where all the adverse drugs and all the repository of all these are there. Right. So such a link should be actually be circulated more uh, commonly to the ophthalmologist because it is notifiable, but I think uh, the link, yes, sir. most people are not aware. And now we'll have to.